Today we're going to start kinematics 2 and how we're going to start is trying to understand position versus time graphs. So our first position versus time graph we're going to show a positive slope, our second position versus time graph we're going to show a negative slope, and then we're going to show the change between the two on the third graph where the slope will go uh, negative and then positive. And so that way we can see the difference between a few of them. Uh, there's several different other ones we could do, but this is just a couple examples. Uh, for every position versus time graph, um, is, uh, every position versus time graph is representing an object traveling down a number line. Uh, we did this in class today where uh, your teacher walked in the hallway, you timed your teacher walking slow or fast or brisk, uh, and you got to see what would happen with respect to time down a number line. So let's talk about this first graph's number line. And so I've numbered the number line from negative 2 to 5, and this first graph is as if I started from 0 and traveled to 5. So I kept going in the positive direction. I was traveling in a straight line, but I gained... Uh, more position, a further position from the origin or from zero from where I started uh, and with respect to time. So you can see I'm getting further and further away from where I started with, with respect to time, so that gives me a positive slope. Uh, the second graph, we'll do another number line, and this one I'm getting closer to the origin. So I'm starting further away and walking toward the origin. And you can see that that has a negative slope. And the last one, what's happening here, is I start on the number line, a long ways away from the origin, walk to the origin, and then walk back. And you can see I actually reach the origin. The x-axis is pretty much the origin, because uh, as a function of time, as time continues on throughout uh, you know, life or anything like that, it still has a baseline, a, a point of zero. So that is our position is zero as time continues to go on. So I walk toward the origin, which I end up hitting the x-axis, which is the origin for us, and then walk away from it. What that tells us is that our slope is velocity. For every single one of these graphs, our slope is velocity. The first graph has a positive slope. The second slope has a negative slope, so the velocity is negative. And the third graph has both positive and negative velocity. So what we try to do is we write equations for these graphs in the form of y equals mx plus b. And every single one of these graphs can have a relationship written in these equations because they are lines. And every single one of the variables in this equation uh, is a placeholder. It just holds a place for one of our variables for physics. So y represents the y-axis, x represents the x-axis, m represents the slope, and b represents the y-intercept. They are things that we can find and redefine in terms of physics. So on these graphs, we are going to have y, which is going to be our final position. Slope will be velocity, uh, and, and it will replace slope. And time will be our x-axis, and then x naught is the variable there that I wrote for um, the y-intercept, and it is known as initial position. So you can see initial position is there. That's where I started. And then over there is final position, right here. And that's where I finished. We represent initial position with x naught, and then we represent final position with x. So what I'm doing now is drawing the velocity versus time graphs that match these particular graphs you see above. So the position versus time graph has a matching velocity versus time. For every single one of these graphs, velocity is constant. Okay, so we have a, for the first position versus time graph, our slope for velocity was positive. So if we look at the velocity versus time graph below, uh, what we get, if we look at the velocity versus time graph below, I'll go ahead and draw, so this goes to this. I look at the velocity versus time graph below, the line is a constant positive line for velocity versus time. Velocity is constant, and it is positive based on our graph above. If we do the same thing for the other graph, we go down here to this graph, 
the position versus time graph was at a slope of negative, so the velocity was negative, so if we go down to the velocity versus time graph, it is a constant negative velocity. So we have a constant negative line. Uh, the last one has is, is a special situation. It's something that we never really observe in real life. But what it is is an object or a person moving toward the origin or their starting position. And so they're walking toward their starting position in a negative direction, basically. They're returning to their original position. So it's a negative direction. And it's a constant negative velocity. So we have a constant line. And then all of a sudden, when they get to their origin, they are able to change direction and go in the positive direction without accelerating or decelerating or any type of acceleration at all. And we call that an instantaneous change in velocity. And you can see that represented in the graph here below that there is a gap. There's this gap here that there's no connection to the line. And that gap is showing that there was something that happened in that gap that we couldn't measure. This person was able to, like, like a football player that makes a cut, they put their foot in the ground and they change directions and they do it so fast that we can't even measure it and they decelerate and accelerate again and change directions without any, without any measurable acceleration. You can never truly observe that in real life, but that's the best example I can give you uh, off the top of my head. So that is an instantaneous change in velocity. And velocity is constant there. So position versus time graphs. The slope for that position versus time graph earlier was positive and it was constant, so our velocity versus time graph will end up being positive and constant. So that's how our velocity versus time graph looks. It should match exactly what we see as the slope for the position versus time graph. And so the position versus time graph for this one, the slope was negative and constant, and therefore the velocity versus time graph will represent the same thing a negative line that is constant. And so you should see that these relationships follow each other. Uh, a position versus time graph, you can re-graph in the form of its slope as velocity versus time, and you re-graph it in a different graph with different axes. Um, so let's look at some more position versus time graphs. Okay, and then velocity versus time graph, and then an acceleration versus time graph. These are all related. These all work together. Um, so what I have here is a position versus time graph where there is a curve. And what that tells me right off the bat is that the object is accelerating. And if it's accelerating, then my velocity is no longer constant. There is a change in my velocity. So uh, what we do is we try to, we've talked about linearizing graphs and, and, and doing it that way. So I've already linearized it, but I'm doing it in a different way than trying to find uh, a graphical relationship where I can write an equation. What I've done is drawn two tangent lines. Uh, and the first tangent line uh, you see here, let me reverse this real quick. The first tangent line you see here at the bottom go all the way back to that, that first tangent line right there at the bottom of the position versus time curve at the very beginning of it, that slope is zero. Okay? And at the end of it, the slope is positive. It's actually very positive. Okay? It's a very big positive. It's very steep. Okay? So what I do there is I end up having to do the velocity versus time graph. I have to start at zero and go very positive. And you can see I redrew that graph to match the tangent lines. Uh, I basically linearized the graph without doing any math. I did it very kind of intuitively. Uh, but that is the relationship that you'll end up seeing. It's a velocity versus time graph. Um, the acceleration versus time graph, uh, how we get that, the slope of a velocity versus time graph is acceleration. So since its slope 
is positive and constant, that means my acceleration versus time graph is positive and constant. And I can just draw a straight, constant line in the positive quadrant, and it is a sketched acceleration versus time graph. The position versus time graph, the slope is changing, so we see the velocity versus time graph be a changing line. It, it is increasing over time, or it's decreasing over time. It's changing in some form. Um, so that's, that's how we can see the relationships uh, going from one graph to the other. So really what's happening is the object's velocity is changing and therefore accelerating. And how we can represent this second graph again, uh, here I'm redrawing it and trying to define certain parts of it. I have initial velocity represented by V0. I have final velocity represented by V. And the slope is rise over run, like we talked about, which is now going to be V minus V0, which is acceleration. So our slope is acceleration, just trying to drive that point home. V minus V naught is considered change in velocity. So we rewrite our equation where the acceleration equals the change in velocity over time. So slope of a velocity versus time graph is acceleration. That's a huge point that we have to do. Uh, it's like position versus time, the slope of its velocity. Uh, velocity versus time, the slope is acceleration. Uh, we, we try to make sure we make connections to all types of graphs from our previous graph. Now, if we were to take the area under the curve of a velocity versus time graph, so we fill that in, that ends up looking like a triangle, so we could find the area of a triangle by doing one-half base times height. We could find the actual displacement of, a, of an object. So if all we were given, like if, if this graph was the only thing we are given, that's it. And somebody asked you to find displacement, and this is all you have, you could then do the area under the curve, or area under the line, or area under whatever it is, and find that shape. It'll always be a known shape. Or you could split it into different shapes. You could have a square and a triangle. Um, but basically, you can find the area of all the shapes underneath your line or curve of velocity versus time, and it would give you displacement. So let's talk about what we know about each type of graph. So we're going to talk with a, a position versus time graph. What we know is that the slope of a position versus time graph is velocity. We know this. We need to know this. The other thing we know is that an, uh, an object or a line, so we have an object moving in that direction on the, on the graph, is going in a positive direction away from the origin. If we have an object that represents a line moving like this, then it's going in a negative direction, because it has a negative slope, and it's going toward the origin. Velocity versus time graphs, what do we know? We know that the slope of velocity versus time graph is acceleration. We know that moving in this particular direction on that graph means the object is speeding up, it's gaining more velocity, and it's doing that in the positive direction. So there's an example of that. And then um, an object moving like this along this, uh, in this graph is slowing down, but it's slowing down in the positive direction. And, and how I know that it's in the positive direction, other than that it's in the positive quadrant, is that the area under the curve is positive and its displacement. So when I take the area under that section there, the area under that section is positive. It's positive area equals positive displacement, so I must have been moving in the positive direction. All right, acceleration versus time. Big note. Always have a constant acceleration in AP Physics 1. You don't deal with variable accelerations until you get to uh, AP Physics C. So we have a straight constant line for the acceleration there. And then uh, the other thing that we know about an acceleration versus time graph is that the area underneath it is the change in velocity. So if you look at acceleration versus time graph, the area underneath the acceleration versus time graph will become... Whoa, that was not good. Let's redo that. Will become...
velocity. Let's redo that again. Here we go. Draw it all the way to velocity. There we go. It will become velocity. It will be the previous graph. Area under their acceleration versus time curve is velocity. Area under a velocity versus time is displacement. It always goes back to the previous one. Uh, in calculus, it's known as an integral. Um, but we're not going to go that direction. We're not going to do those things. This is just a way of seeing it uh, in, in algebraic terms. So these are the things we should know about each type of graph. And then we will get some more practice with this in class uh, next time.